Hi, my name is Andalee and welcome back to The Last Pigment. If you haven't run across my channel before, I do a lot of watercolor DIY and we talk about how to make a career in illustration. <laughs> If you're new to painting and you want to learn about illustration, please feel free to check out the website that I have linked below. I'm not going to say any more about it, but I have a bunch of resources down there and you can check them out if you want to. In this video, we're going to be painting some watercolor crystals and I will not be using any gouache in this video aside from painting the background. So this is a great example if you are learning how to watercolor paint and you want to learn how to paint crystals. You can follow along in this video and watch as I paint this composition out. I'm gonna be repurposing these crystals and selling them on Creative Market later. So if you're interested in how to create products and then sell them online, this is also a great space for you. So we're gonna move on to the video and in this one, we're gonna be painting the crystals. I'm really excited because I love how they turned out. And then I will see you at the very end. I'll be talking a little bit in this video, so if you just wanna tune out and watch me paint, go ahead and feel free to mute the video and just watch me paint. Otherwise, I will be chatting about how I got the inspiration for these crystals, where I found them, and just other stuff about inspiration that, that helps me to keep painting and keep finding things to paint. So I hope you enjoy. Today's video is gonna be a little bit longer than my usual videos just because I took a couple days to work on this project. I went to the gem fair about two to three weeks ago and collected a bunch of crystals that I wanted to paint. I actually took some uh, reference photos while I was there of things that I didn't buy. And I'm gonna be using those to paint some patterns and you know, I don't know what it is about crystals, but they fascinate me and I really love how geometric they are and all of the hard edges. I feel like it's really phenomenal practice to, um, you know, use them as a way to think about shapes in a geometric sense. So when I went there, I really had it in my mind that I wanted to do this subject. So I was looking for inspiration while I was there. Having said that, um, it really was hard painting these for the first time. I've never painted crystals before. I've seen some people on Instagram doing watercolor crystals, but I've never attempted them myself. So it was really exciting to do this for the first time and I really felt like it was activating a different part of my brain than the usual one because I wasn't painting a flower. I also think that I'm gonna do a lot more of these and upcoming video is gonna be one where I'm doing crystals but with gouache and it'll be a different painting altogether because I'm gonna be using the reference images that I took while I was there. I might even provide that reference image in case you'd like to paint crystals as well. Um, I don't see a lot of watercolor artists doing that where they're sharing their reference materials uh, with other artists and I feel like that's actually a really awesome thing to do because, you know, the art isn't that precious to me. I can just create it again. <laughs> I can just make more of it. Um, so that's kind of where my head's at. I, I enjoy sharing. I like giving back to the artist community and I like, um, you know, giving reference images to other artists because let's face it, uh, when we're cooped up inside all the time, we are lacking inspiration sometimes unless it's on our desk. So. I have actually built out my collection of crystals right now so that I have a bunch of inspiration so I can kind of go to them and mix them up and you know figure out what sort of subject I want to paint and then uh, combine them with other subjects. So I'm not going to talk about that because that part is a surprise but I will be doing kind of a series of crystal paintings that will have different subjects in them. And I'm really excited about that. The, the crystal painting series is going to be really cool and something that I also haven't seen done online yet. I'm, I'm really focusing on doing stuff that I don't see people doing a lot of. I want to kind of branch out into new territory because I see a lot of artists are doing kind of the same subjects all the time. So crystals are not original. Please do not take it that way. <laughs> but I do want to do them in a way that 
is kind of unique. So I'm gonna be mixing and matching subjects this upcoming month for Inktober. I think it's a perfect opportunity to actually do something really new and do it every single day for 30 days. So we'll see how it turns out. I always kind of drop off the bandwagon at the last minute of Inktober just because it gets so busy. We have um, Adobe Max coming up and a lot of events going on. I have my surface pattern design conference usually every year. I'm not sure if I'm attending this year, but I definitely, I'll be attending Adobe Max for sure and doing the illustration track. I do that every year. I think it's phenomenal and all artists should attend and stay on top of what's going on in the technology sphere. And um, yeah, I just have a lot of conferences that happen between September and November. So I thought I would mention that because that's also going to be going on. Along with that, more news, guys. Um, I'm going to be running the next half marathon, and I'm doing a half marathon series. I never thought that I would do this, but I decided to do it because it's kind of a once in a lifetime opportunity. If I don't do it now, I might never. I'm. I might never do this. So I decided I would run this series of half marathons and I've already completed the first one. It was a week ago and it went really well. I was so sore. I had to take a week off of um, running completely and I'm going to be jumping back on my training schedule because this year they decided to have each half marathon back to back. So I just ran the first one. I have to run the next one in two and a half weeks. And then the third one is in November and they're doing this just because of COVID. It's gonna be a little bit different than usual and um, yeah, they're gonna be back to back. So I have to continue training and it's gonna be really busy because I don't know how I'm gonna do that plus Inktober, plus my courses, plus my conferences. And then I also work full time. So my gosh, it's gonna be a busy, busy year. But thanks for tuning in and hanging out. Um, I did want to mention a little bit about the process of this painting. I'm doing a lot of glazing here because I really wanted to get some organic detail on all of these subjects. I decided to do the, the gouache background later on, but I will tell you, I did not do any gouache on this painting specifically other than the background. I decided to do that because I really wanted to challenge myself to glaze more on this particular subject and try and pull more detail in towards the end. I think it turned out in being successful. Um, when I stuck to the glazing techniques, I used the same color and built up over and over again with the same color. There are a few instances where you'll see on the pink and yellow crystal, I did a wet and wet technique where I merge the pink and the yellow together very gently in wet and wet. If you are not familiar with wet and wet technique, I have a video showing you the very basics of how to do that. So check that out. I'll link it below. As far as the other uh, crystals, I tried to kind of stay within their color family. So the pink and purple crystal, I very gently mix those two colors and I wet and wet glaze them together. And then the blue and yellow crystal, I did the same. But the other two crystals, I stick in the same color family and I don't mix. Um, as far as the fossil, the fossil was a totally different subject. I had to really organically think about it as a 3D object. I kind of made a little bit of a shadow below the fossil just to kind of make it pop off the page using Payne's Gray. I'm not sure how I feel about that one right now, but I think I might digitally correct that later and just make it look a little bit more real before I go to sell these as digital creations. Um, I did want to mention that in this video, just in case you're wondering about the actual physical process of creating these. I'm including this really long time lapse just so you can see literally every step of the process here and how I built it up. I'm also using a very small Velvet Touch Princeton brush. Um, I happen to really love these brushes. They're very soft, they're bendable, and they I, I don't think they're real sable, but they mimic a sable brush very, very well. 
So if you're interested in having a brush that um, is very soft and gives you fine detail, these are fantastic brushes. You can get them at any art supply near you. I think that does it for this video. I'm gonna let you listen to the music for the last portion of this. It's quite a meaty video, so thanks for tuning in. I have more updates, but I'll save that for another video. And yeah, uh, check out the links below. I have some resources that I've used in the past. I really hope you enjoyed that video. It was really fun painting those crystals and I'm gonna be doing the next video where I paint the crystals in gouache because today I'm going to be receiving my jelly gouache kit. I've seen a lot of people painting with those lately and I'm really excited to try them out because jelly gouache just seems like a really cool mixture of like oil and acrylics. I don't know, but they're water-based, so that kind of that really excites me because I'm a fan of gouache. I love gouache; it's it's kind of a big deal to me. So it's kind of a, a chance for me to paint gouache, kind of like how I paint my oil paints, which I don't do in very many videos, but I might do one soon. That's a great idea. I just thought of that. All right, well, I'll see you in the next video. Sorry for all the chatting, and thanks for hanging in there if you did to the very end of this video. I appreciate your support. Please like and subscribe. It helps me out. I appreciate it so much. Thank you again. See you in the next one.